Woohoo! Hey there, hi there, ho there, y'all, and welcome aboard the rocket chair. I am Grammy Mary, and I will be your captain slash hostess slash tour guide on as we travel through the mind lines into the phantasmagorical. Or at least try to avoid the potholes and the dips in the road, because, you know, there's lots of dips in the road. Also, um, you got to kind of be careful, because I do like hitting the speed bumps kind of hard, so be sure to buckle up, children. Also, there is no need to push or shove. Because here in the rocket chair, we have plenty of room and everyone gets a window seat. Yes, we pride ourselves on being able to give everyone a window seat. Yes, and my stupid speaker is unable to send data fast enough. So we'll try this again and give it another shot. And encoding resume. There you go. Now don't be giving me no shit here. Keep your hands to yourself. Take care of yourself. Also, I got to tell you one more thing before we blast off here, peeps. Um, you know, there is a sign over the doorway. As you climb on board the rocket chair. And uh, if you didn't notice, it does say, here there be F-bombs. That is not a warning. It's a promise. So, hey there, hi there, ho there, y'all. How you doing? And welcome aboard. It is a whack a whack a whack a whack a whack a doodle Wednesday here at the rocket chair. Although there are some that are listening that it is now Thursday. Those are the time traveler people, like the lovely Miri B. And my freaking Spreaker got dandruff some of it itches. <sighs> what the hell? What the hell? I see you, baby girl. Grammy, my Spreaker is having issues. I don't know what the hell's going on. Hmm... I wonder, let me, let me, okay, try it again. There it goes, there it goes again. I'm running the metadata script, Grim. I'm running it. <laughs> it's just that I keep having issues. So this is probably going to be a totally messed up recording, just so you know, because um, I'm not sure what the hell is going on with this shit. Okay, Rascal, I love you too, baby girl, but darn it all. Darn it all. There it goes. See, it's running, Grimmy. It's running. Okay, and my Spreaker is starting to pick up speed. My stream is getting stronger, don't you know? And I already went to the bathroom because <laughs> I did say something about speed bumps, didn't I? I think I did. I think I warned you about that. Fudge sickles. Okay, Grim. Spreaker's going to be totally fucked up. So, let's see. Let's try this shit again. Yeah, there was my F-bomb for the night. Um, and it keeps saying error. Let me see here. Let me see if I can do... Just a second. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Nope, I gotta go down. Okay. We'll just we'll just cancel that and we'll see if it keeps going. If it doesn't, Grim, it's there's not gonna be a frickin' recording tonight, cause yeah. Cause I didn't set nothing else up. <laughs> <laughs> sucks balls. Sucks balls. Okay. Um what? Vinny makes the best gravy. I beg to differ. Vinny, I think I make way better great. God, dandruff, some of it itches. Don't give me this shit. But I may have to restart or something. Because this is really pissing me off. Or maybe reboot my... Ugh, I don't want to do that either. Fudgicles. Okay. In any case, 
I'm going to try and get through this shit, <laughs> even though I'm having trouble. Because, don't you know, I always do. If, if it ain't one thing, it's another. 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 Okay. Um, what is that in the background? Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, over here on Book, I don't see anybody hanging out over here on Book. Let me check out that effing site. I do remember seeing the lovely T.D. Sanders is over here, as well as Miri B. from Down Under. I also see Entity for Truth is over here, as well as Clint C. and Estrella. Hey there, y'all. How you doing? Thank you, Barman, by the way, for uh, tweeting me over there on Twitter. I truly do appreciate it. And, um, let me see here. I'm just double checking. God dang it, Grim. It just keeps saying it has, um, unable to send data fast enough. So I don't know what the hell's going on with my damn, okay, and it's picking up again. Okay, I'm just not going to touch it. I don't know what the hell's going on. <clears throat> the story of your life, Moosey. Oh, shit, girl. Girlfriend. Oh, Spreaker tweeted that I'm on? Okay, I'm going to leave it the hell alone then and just let it do its thing. And if shit's screwed up, then shit's screwed up. Because I think I've already dropped one F-bomb, haven't I? Um, give Graham some butter for her buns. Well, gut dander some of it itches. You going to butter my buns, Vinny? <laughs> I don't think so, hon. You're clean over there in 10 EC with Dan. So, a little bit fur piece for you to reach, don't you know? Okay, let me see. Who did I say hi to? Over here in the corner pocket, I saw Grimmy is over here, as well as the lovely Moose Girl. Um, oh, hi, Ivy Doncy. That would be awesome if you did. Um, I also see... Thank you, Lochnar, laughing at me. I see how you are. You silly, silly man. Okay, um... Did I really? No. Cause the other, no, Grimmy, cause the other one, or is that the, am I running the, what? Am I, no, I can't be. I, cause the other one says dorks. This one, the one that I, <laughs> No, Grimmy, the one that the one that I'm not running says dorks. What the hell? <laughs> oh, and I'm not going to try and run the other one because the other one says dorks too. So unless we totally screwed up, <laughs> which is nothing new for me. Oh man, that's okay. That's okay. Because, you know what, it's it's a one shot tonight, because I won't be on Friday, so fuck it. <laughs> oh, y'all. Wow. No, the other one says dorks. Unless, <clears throat> no, because cause this one I checked. I checked. Honest and for true. Yeah, the other one says dorks doing dorky things. So I'm just not going to mess with it. And now my encoding is resuming on the speaker one. Um, I know, Grim, that's the one I'm running is the top one. <laughs> let me see here. Let me, let me check it. Ouch. Ouch, rascal. Okay. And so that, that is supposed to be. <laughs> Oh, Grim. We just have entirely too much fun. You know that? <laughs> Let me see which one this is. No, and that's the one. Okay, I clicked on it, and that's the one I'm running right now. So, let me, let me check just a sec. Nope, that's the w I'm running the right one. <laughs> I don't know what's 
going on, Graham? <laughs> oh, screwing up, screwing down, screwing sideways. What the hell? Don's doing the happy dance. Okay, you know what? I'm just not going to worry about it. It's like, fuck it. So whack a doodle Wednesday. Things are bound to get whacked, don't you know? Okay, um <laughs> Sunny Beaches in California. Uh, which speaking of California, I think they're not gonna have to worry about trying to um secede from the nation because I think Mother Nature is going to make sure that they get removed from the country. <laughs> have you noticed? I mean, the only thing they need now is like pestilence and and a bunch of locusts and a big old earthquake, which I think all of the rain that they're getting is probably getting down in that fault. And then they'll get a freeze and that water will expand and it'll just go chunk. And then people in Colorado will have beachfront property, don't you know? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> See and Grimmy, I clicked on the the uh, the um, script that it was linked to, and that says Grammy's rocket chair. So I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Okay, I'm just gonna say hi. Okay, hi Asmo, I see you up top, my missionary man. How you doing, darling? I also see Barman is here. Who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world? Because well, he's Barman, don't you know? And he always he weeds us and and he gets us beverages and occasionally he makes announcements that are really way cool. <laughs> I also see the lovely Beth Z is in the chat, as well as Grimner, who is the creator of RLM, which is just way cool. That's right, I be Don C. Get your sons home. Tell them to get their asses home now, because yeah, old Kaboom is getting ready to go Kasmite or Kasmote on Mexifornia. Um, let's see, the lovely Moose Girl is here as well. Hey there, Moosey, how you doing? And Kate! Aw, oh, how you doing, Kate? I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day. I also see Chelsea Denis is in the chat. Chelsea Denis, would you put that O back in there? Because that stumbles my tongue when I do that. We got a double dip and a Chloe going on in the chat. And looky there, Dan Tenny C. I wonder where Dan's from. Hmm. Have to think about that. <laughs> I also, oh, I get to breathe heavy. Hi, Darth Rome's. <laughs> I love doing that because I'm dorky like that. I also, and seeing as how I've got the dorky feed going, I may as well be dorky, right? Right. You know what? I was even coordinated today and stuck lots of shit in my pocket. So, yeah. Um, Where am I at? I'm here. Oh, kind of. Sorta, I'm here. I be Don C is here, and he's wanting his sons to get their asses home, because as well they should be. They should not be in Mexifornia, California, whatever you want to call that place over yonder to the west, with the setting sun. You know the sun will set on Mexifornia, and then, like I said, Colorado will have beachfront property. Um, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is at least logged into the chat, but I don't see him here. It looks like he's marked away. I also see P. Bunyan, Timber, as well as Rob Works, and I think I saw Rob Works had done the bubbler a little bit earlier today. Uh, let me check, double check. No, Vinny, I'm scrolling up, and I see Vinny wants me to check his pocket. No, honey, I've had people tell me that before, and no... I, it took me a couple of times, but I learned. <laughs> I can be just a wee bit of a slow learner from time to time. Um, Phantom. Hi, Phantom. How you doing, sweetheart? That was so fun getting to Skype with you the other day. I also see Dakota is in the house, as well as Frumpy. Frumpy, did you finish watching that Michael Tellinger? video that I shared. It really was quite fascinating. That was the first half. It was I love listening to Michael Tellinger. He he's got so much way cool information to share. 
and I kind of have one of those weird eccentric bents anyway. So yeah, I really, really do enjoy listening to his stuff. Um, Jehovah One is here, just kind of loitering in the chat, waiting until feeling the gumption to just go and smite California, just for shits and giggles. Jehovah One, if you need a little practice, there's a place on the other coast. It's called D.C. You could smite that first just to get a little warm-up, a little practice. You know, wouldn't bother me a whole hell of a lot. Uh, thanks for that bubbler, Rob. Truly do appreciate it. I also see JJ's 999 JJ's is here. And JJ's sweetheart, you know, um, I would love to, to talk and all that other fun stuff on the phone, but wow, I'm having issues. <laughs> and so I don't know that tonight would necessarily be a good night for trying to have a, a phone convo, besides the fact that um, I don't have contact info. That kind of helps just a wee bit. I also see Juana Taco is here, and guess what? Guess what? Vinny asked if I had plenty of gas <laughs> fueled up. You know, and I just got to let you know, Vinny, that um, I had a breakfast burrito this morning, and I also got a beef and bean burrito for this evening for when I get done with a rocket chair, so I will be fueled for the weekend, whether I'm on the radio or not, but, you know, I'll be grandbabying, so I will definitely need some fuel. Yes, Rob Works, that was just in the nick of time. How do you nick time? Do you put just a little notch in it? Is that how you do that? Oh, Rob was having enchiladas. <laughs> enchiladas are very good, too. I have a hell of a good recipe for chicken enchiladas. Mmm, chicken. Okay, moving along. <laughs> Hi, Kozu. How you doing, sweetheart? Uh, the lovely Miri B is over here as well from Down Under. How you doing, sister? And looky there. Mmm, but, mmm, but. I just love saying that. I also love saying Nensan du Bois because I get the whole facial exercise going on with that one. As well as, hi, North Force. How you doing, hon? And looky there. The lovely Rain is signed into the chat, although I don't know if she's here or not. But, hi, Rain. How you doing, sweetheart? And Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. <laughs> You're right, Sock. I <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if you can run fast enough, Sock. <laughs> I am rock I'm rocket propelled or burrito propelled, however you wish to put that. <laughs> I also see Scientist Say is here. Hi there, sweetheart. I actually have a couple of links in my pocket from Scientist. <laughs> Go figure. And Stats Bob is here as well as Tip Bob. So we got a double dip and a Bob's going on. Mmm, battery operated boyfriend. Don't have one of those. <laughs> I'm sure that was entirely too much information for y'all, but there you have it. It's already there, burned into your brain. Yeah, I'm not going to apologize for that. Nope, nope, nope. Finney's going to be back in a bit. Where you going, hon? Getting some munchies? You need some Doritos or Cheetos? You stoned and now you need something to munch on? <laughs> I also see Bill underscore is here. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Woodman Party. How you doing, Woody? What's that? Oh, you're sure. An honest Pole. What? Are you saying Polish people are not honest? Or is this? Oh, okay. Never mind. Do you? Uh, who do you trust more to tell the truth about important issues? POTUS, Trumple Stillskin, or the news media? <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. Uh, yeah. Go on, Graham. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes to the lamestream media, you know, corporate lame-ass propaganda system, as you so eloquently put it, Grimmy, um... I think I would trust my dogs to tell me the truth before 
I would trust them. And my dogs, whenever one of them makes an accident in the house, you know, and I go, okay, which one of you did this? They both get that look like, wasn't me. <laughs> it was the cat. No, no, the cat doesn't do that big. <laughs> it was not the cat. It was the dog. And one of you better fess up. So, yeah, I would trust my dogs over I would the lamestream media. So, okay, let me go check over here. Hi, Alex Mulder Fox and Sweetheart. You are just really going off on rants this evening. What the heck is going on with you? Are you just crankified? Do you have a knot in your knickers? I hate when that happens. Although it does clean things out, but mm, it is not exactly comfortable. Okay, I am going to come over here to my pocket because I have way cool stuff that I threw in here. And, you know, seeing as how I was talking about Maxifornia just a little bit ago, let's just go here, shall we? This is from the Red Flag News dot com don't see neither neither choice in there not really sock neither neither nor it's it's more of a yeah i would like to have the neither neither nor none yeah none the above that's nota isn't it yeah that's who i voted for actually nota none of the above because I'm I'm one of those good little soldiers that <laughs> says, are you shitting me? This is the best we had to choose from? I don't think so. Okay. So, from the redflagnews.com. Apparently, they have 199 mile per hour uh, winds in the Sierra Nevada. And uh, California is at critical level with evacuations. Lake Tahoe Avalanche buries highway plus major flooding around the globe. I'm thinking Mother Nature is not pleased with us. What do you think? Do you think somebody gave her parquet instead of butter? You know, she she has a tendency to get a little crankified. And maybe she's just getting to the point where she's going to shake us off like a dog shakes off water. You think? If she does, are we going to do anything about it? Not really. There ain't damn thing can do. But <clears throat> to go on with this, the Golden State is in absolute shit hit the fan mode with more extreme weather coming. So please pray for those who are affected and threatened by Mother Nature. Well, you know what? You piss off Mother Nature. Mother Nature only takes so much. And, Don, I hope your sons get out of there. And I have a few friends in uh, California that I would love to see them get out of there before this shit hits the fan. But I don't know that that's going to happen. Damn it all. Damn it all. Not cool. Excuse me. There are currently three major flooding events underway at various locations around the globe occurring simultaneously. Because apparently Mother Nature is thinking, I'm not going to jiggle that handle yet. You know, that reminds me, today at work, somebody, a guy, yes, someone told me that the last person that went into the ladies' room was a guy, went in there, flushed the toilet, held the handle down, and apparently didn't make sure it popped back up again, because, you know, sometimes those do get stuck. And so when I went back there to use the facilities, what did I find? A flood. So, y'all need to remember, jiggle that damn handle, okay? And maybe that's what's going on here. Maybe there's three spots on the globe where someone forgot to jiggle the handle. I don't know. Um, let's see. Bark peeling wind speeds were recorded last night, or the, oh, that's the 20th, excuse me, two nights ago, in the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Is that Mount? They spelled it wrong. And it's almost as if we're reliving the days of Noah. Lord, how do you build an ark? What's well, cubit? I have no idea. I've been told it's from your elbow to the tip of your fingers, but everybody's different from their elbow. But, go figure, there's lots and lots of vids attached to this. So I'm thinking, Noah, Noah, where are you? I have a, 
I have a great nephew who's named Noah. Do you think maybe he could help? I think he's a little bit young. I don't think Orville popped yet. Uh, let's see. What's that? How about we call it, what? No more forcing 320 million people into a single mold. Oh, hey, hey, there's a novel idea. Huh. Um. Oh, the white, non-white categories. Yeah, I know, Sock. Isn't that just funnier than hell? I'm, I'm not white. Not totally. I'm a Grammy cracker. You know, and in the summertime, I'm multicolored. I'm kind of like Neapolitan ice cream. So there you go. Um, okay, Kate, I'm going to go there just because, well, number one, you shared it. And number two, it's on the Ron Paul Liberty Report. So what the hey. This is from yesterday. You know, I actually have something in my pocket from this, from today, I believe. So. No more forcing 320 million people into a mold. Yeah, you know those boxes that they keep trying to put us in? I don't fit well. My key cats do. They're very good at crawling into boxes and then crawling back out of them and usually having one of those fits going on while they're doing so. But um, let's see. So, some of our assumptions are so deeply embedded that we cannot perceive them ourselves. Case in point, everyone takes for granted that it's normal for a country of 320 million to be dedicated to a single central authority. <laughs> everyone takes that for granted. I don't. The only debate we've permitted or yeah, okay, the only debate we we are permitted to have is who should be selected to carry out this grotesque and inhumane function. Really? Seriously? Who in the hell would want that job? I don't. God. Putting up with all that shit and all those whiny assers? We don't, there are not enough ambulances out there for all the whiny assers right now. Can you imagine how many ambulances we would have to have if I ran the zoo? Lord, that would be scary. So here's the debate that we should be having instead. What if we simply abandoned this quixotic mission and went our separate ways? Oh, hey, that sounds like a plan. Although it's another one of those all-encompassing kind of plans. Um, it's an idea that's gaining traction. Much too late to be sure, but better late than never. Ah, mm -hmm. Yeah, could possibly be. So, for a long time, it seems as if the idea of secession was unlikely to take hold in modern America. School children, after all, are told to associate secession with slavery and treason. American journalists treat the idea as if it were self-evidently ridiculous, or redunculous even, and contemptible. Oh my God! That's an attitude that they curiously do not adopt when faced with U.S. war propaganda. <laughs> and yet, all it took was the selection of Trumple Stilskin for the alleged toxicity of secession to vanish entirely. The left, the left's principled opposition to secession and devotion to the unholy union went promptly out the window, November 8, 2016. Today, by the way, I just want to point out, you know, real quickly, that when it went out the window, they didn't bother opening it first because they love smashing glass, don't you know? In any case, today, which was actually yesterday, I'm time traveling, don't you know? About one in three Californians polled favored the Golden State secession from the Union. Honey, I think old Kaboom and Mother Nature are going to see to that for you. I don't think you're going to have to worry about it. You're going to be an island. Mm -hmm. Is that what's left of you? In other words, some people seem to be coming to the conclusion that the whole system is rotten and should be abandoned. Well, okay. I agree with that. 
So what's wrong with that assumption or conclusion? It's true that most leftists have not come around to this way of thinking. Many have adopted the creepy slogan, not my president. Well, you know, I kind of sort of said that a couple of presidents ago. Because it's like, really? You don't represent me. Because in order for you to represent me, that means that I have to ask you to present yourself as me. Wow, that's fucked up. In other words, I may not want this particular person having the power to intervene in all aspects of life and holding in his hands the ability to destroy the entire earth, or at least certain parts of it. But I most certainly do want someone else to have those powers. No, I don't. No, 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 no. Gotta, no. I don't want anyone having those powers. I don't even trust myself with those powers. It's not exactly a head-on challenge to the system, in other words. And that's where we libertarians are. The problem in their view is only that the wrong people are in charge. Indeed, leftists who once said small is beautiful and question authority had little trouble embracing large federal bureaucracies in charge of educraption, supposed health care, housing, and pretty much every important thing out there. Which, you know, when you put large bureaucracies in charge of those things, we now have pud- public educraption. We have a health care system that is dedicated to you not having any health whatsoever. And, oh, wait, there's more. They have made sure that they're the only ones that can legally poison you. You know, they are legal pushers or legal dispensers. And your MD is the pusher. And housing, well, I think uh, homeless rates are at their highest right now. So how's that working out for you? Oh, I'm not saying that there aren't a lot of empty houses in this country. I'm just saying that they're not letting anybody that needs a roof over their head reside in them. Because, well, control freak shit. And these authorities, of course... You're not to question, unless they are headed by Trump nominee, in which case they may be temporarily ignored because, well, Trump will still said so, and he is the troll in chief, or the orange one, or the Oompa Loompa, or whatever you wish to call him. I actually do prefer Trump will myself because, well, you know, he thinks that everything he touches is golden. The only problem is, there's an awful lot of people out there, they're weird people, but there's an awful lot of people out there that are into golden showers, and I'm thinking that's about the only golden that he, tu- you know, when he touches things, it turns to gold, as in showers, as in trickle-down theory, as in something smells funny around here. What the hell? Cut that out. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the right wing has been calling for the abolition of the Department of Educraption practically since its creation in 1979. Oh, so see, that's why Educraption has gone to shit. Because when I was in high school, we didn't have that. Yeah, I know, I'm telling you how old I am. That hasn't happened yet. And, as you may have noticed, having the agency in Rebloodlican hands become or became the more urgent task. Although, I think this is still all smoke and mirrors, yada, 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 blah, 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 bullshit. Each side pours tremendous resources into trying to take control of federal apparatus and lord it over the whole country. So how about we call it quits? Oh, I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Although, they, I keep getting told, nature abhors a vacuum. Hoover, Eureka, I like vacuums because they suck up the shit that's all over the place. You know, you you need a wet dry vac for that, but it would work. I think no more federal fiefdoms. I agree with that. No more forcing 320 million people into a single mold. No more dick 
dictating to everyone from a central state. Radical? Yes. And surely not a perspective we were exposed to as school children. But is it so unreasonable? Hmm, let's ponder this a moment. I don't think so. Is it not, in fact, the very height of reason and good sense, which is probably why it won't work, because there's so much fluoride and so much crap and so many vaccines that you're supposed to be taking now or giving your kids and all of this other nasty, and let's not even go there with the tic-tac-toe in the sky that's going on. Yeah, uh, reason and good sense is being poisoned out of you. Just saying. And some people, we may reasonably hope, may be prepared to consider these simple and humane questions for the very first time. That would be nice, but it's called cognitive dissonance as well. What? No, we can't. I need. But how will I get my free phone? Who's going to pay for uh, wait a minute. Do you not realize, you know, every person that says, but who's going to pay for? Do you not know all that money that's coming out of your paycheck? Now, granted, it doesn't really go to pay for those things. But for those of you that are a little bit on the federal bureaucracy and economy challenged, all that money that gets pulled out of your paycheck every pay period, that's your money. And some other ass munch is deciding what they can do with your tithing, your uh, unvoluntary tithing, by the way. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, in the circular logic kind of way, which is not really circular logic, it's more of a in-your-face kind of thing, you're paying for it. So you may as well keep that money in your pocket and pay for it as you go. How's that sound for an idea? Now, can we imagine the left actually growing so unhappy as to favor secession as a genuine solution? <laughs> no, because as you see, Mexifornia wants to secede from the Union, but they don't want to do that until 2019. And oh, by the way, they have all these infrastructure problems right now because, well, they've squandered all of the money that they've... Um, <clears throat> unvoluntarily collected, you know, those that tithing that you must do to the Church of Mexifornia and to the Church of Fed of Fornication. And, you know, so all that tithing that you've been doing, well, they squandered that on social issues that were bound to fix everything except for the infrastructure. And now they want that money from the federal government to fix their infrastructure. Side Charlie. So, <clears throat> to go on with this, here's what I know. On the one hand, the left made its long march through the institutions, universities, the media, and pop culture. Their intention was to remake American society. And guess what? You did a bang up job of it. And I do mean big bada boom bang up douche job the task involved an enormous amount of time and wealth secession would amount to abandoning this string of successes and it's hard to imagine them giving up in this way after sinking all of those resources into the long march the funny thing is, all of those resources came out of everyone else's pocket, don't you know? Because me pay for it? No, it's a social program, therefore you must pay for it. Because I said so, and if you don't, you're a sexist, ra racist, xenophobic, something or other or other. At the same time, it's possible that the cultural elite have come to despise the American bourgeoisie so much that they're willing to treat all of that as a sunk cost and simply get out. Yeah, that's called rats abandon abandoning the sinking ship is what that's called. Whatever the case may be, what we can and should do 
is encourage all decentralization and secession talk, such that these heretofore forbidden options become live once again. Heretofore forbidden. Wow, that's a couple. That wow, it's not something you hear in everyday conversation, don't you know? I can already hear the objections from the Beltway Libertarians who are not known for supporting political decentralization. Yeah, they say they're libertarians. He's kind of like all these people that say they're liberal-minded, <laughs> so long as you go along with their notions. They, they will be accepting and tolerant of your ideas, so long as they coincide with theirs. Don't you know? To the contrary, they live for the day when libertarian judges and lawmakers will impose liberty on the entire country. By golly, you're going to have liberty and you're going to like it and we're going to make sure and you're going to have a special kind of liberty that only we know how to dish out. And, on a more basic level, they find talk of states' rights and nullification and secession about which they hold the most exquisitely conventional and PC views to be sources of embarrassment. Oh, excuse me. They're talking about those things. I need to leave the room. I think I had the vapors. Oh, no, that was the burrito this morning. <laughs> so, how are they going to rub elbows with the Fed chairman if they're associated with ideas like these? I know, how do you hobnob with the hobnobbers if you're calling for their off with their heads kind of shit? Even if it is just metaphorical. Of course, we would like to uh, see liberty flourish everywhere. But it's foolish not to accept more limited victories and finite goals when these are only the only realistic options. The great libertarians from Felix Morley and Frank Shodorov to Murray Rothbard and Hans Hope. Hansel? Is that you, Hansel? I don't think so. Have always favored political decentralization. You, you know, it's, it's that old adage, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Huh. F.A. Hayek once said that the future, or in the future, liberty was more likely to flourish in small states. This is surely the way forward for us today. If we want to see tangible changes in our lifetimes. Thomas Sowell referred to two competing ver, uh, visions that lay at, lay at the heart of so much political debate. The constrained and the unconstrained. In the constrained vision, man's nature is not really malleable. His existence contains an element of tragedy. And there is little that politics can do by way of grandiose schemes to perfect society. Yeah, because it's, well, society. And any time you start having societies, things start getting scary. You know, you start having initiations. And next thing you know, you're saying, please, sir, can I have another? And no, thank you. I'm just not into that. Then you have the unconstrained vision. The only limitation to how much society can be remade in the image of its political rulers is how much the rubes are willing to stomach at a given moment. Apparently we are willing to stomach quite a bit. These competing visions are reaching an end game vis-a-vis -vis one another. As Angelo uh, Codavilla observes, the left has overplayed its hand. Uh-huh. They've maxed out the race card and the wanny wanny woo woo card and I'm a special little snowflake and damn it you should do it because I have a hurt feeling. It's right here. It hurts. Would you kiss it? I'll tell you what to kiss. <clears throat> Moving along. The regular folks have reached the limit of their toleration of leftist intimidation and thought control and are hitting back. We can fight it out 
or we can go our separate ways, which I prefer to not have to fight it out. I prefer to, instead of fighting against something, because you know when you fight against something, you're focusing on that something, and anything that you focus on, you get more of. You know, how's that war on drugs working out for you? How's that war on terror working out for you? Yeah. So instead of fighting against something, how about we work towards something? How about we work towards what we want? You know, something positive. Like, oh, let's see, how about we treat each other better? You know, how about we work towards treating each other the way we would like to be treated? Or how about we just simply don't do to someone else what we don't want done to us? That sounds like a hell of a novel idea. Thank you, Circles, for that. So, when I say go our separate ways, I don't mean the left goes one way and the right goes another because, well, there goes the two wings and then that big old honking albatross body gets stuck there going, what the fuck? I mean the left goes one way and everyone else, rather a diverse group indeed, goes another. Okay, didn't we just say that? People who live for moral posturing to broadcast their superiority over everyone else and to steamroll differences in the name of diversity should go one way and everyone else rolls their eyes at all this should go another. But make sure that someone's watching your back because those little snipey buggers, they have a tendency to stab you in the back and then they bitch because you bleed on them. A go figure. No people and no part of a people, said Ludwig von Mises, nearly 100 years ago, shall be held against its will in a political association that it does not want. So much wisdom in that simple statement and so much conflict and anguish could be avoided if we only heeded it. Thank you ever so much for sharing that lovely Kate. I truly do appreciate that. That was really very interesting. I think I will put this over in the uh, um, FM site. What? Holy shit balls. What's that? Nukes, bales, what? Well, that's true, Rob. We're extraining a boil does not create a vacuum. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. I'm just finally getting caught up on the chat. Hi, TD. Welcome aboard, sweetheart. I see you joined over here on the RLM. I hope your evening is going absolutely splendiferous. What? Oh, you're having biscuits and gravy. Rob had biscuits. Did you have biscuits and gravy, hun? That's just cold. Putting that in the chat. I love biscuits and gravy. Okay, let me put this over here on that effing site real quick. And I think I'll put it over here on uh, current temperatures at Fort Lauderdale. 65 point. You know, we got warmer than that today, Sock, out here in the middle of the boonies. Had a little bit of a breeze, though, so. Okay, uh, I'm going to put this over on this effing site as well. Thank you, the lovely Kate, once again for this. This is awesome. I, and see, that's the fun thing about doing this and not really having any plans, because, you know, when I, whenever I make plans, life steps in and goes, guess what? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. Cue you. There you go. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Having plans. It's always so fun when somebody shares something way cool and I can go pop over there and go, Oh, hey, I like that. I like that a lot. I really do. Okay. Now, did I share? Yeah, I did. Um, I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have something else from the Ron Paul Institute. Or from Ron Paul, or I think I stuck it in my. Let me see. Let me make sure. Because I I I threw so much stuff in my pocket today. <laughs> 
And you know what? That's the one thing I didn't put there. Sunny beaches. <laughs> or maybe it was on another one and I just, okay. I'll just, I'll scroll down my. And you know what? I think I'll go here next. I think I will. Just because I want to, I want to, I want to. Or hey, no, I'll go to this one next. Because, you know, we're talking politics, politics, multiple bloodsuckers, that kind of shit. And so, <clears throat> um, <laughs> this is from the trenches, worldreport.com. And this is, you know, more of that nonsense, you know, the superfluous bullshit stuff that that people have to put up with. And then they go, really, seriously? And the only reason I'm putting this out there is so that, you know, hey, see, see, now let's move along. Let's just turn our backs on that bullshit and say, you know what, you want to be a wanny wanny woo woo go over in the corner and do your thing. Apparently a white, meaner soda politician is accused of racism for running against a Latina councilwoman. How dare he? How dare he? Or she, whoever. A local politician and mini papa little ass or mini see now I can't say it right <laughs> Minneapolis who happens to be white I I am offended by that because we are not white we're we're kind of a beige um, some probably closer to a crew but not white white is copy paper white in any case White is a very big, you know, all-encompassing kind of nuh -uh. In any case, this person happens to be white, and they've been accused of racism for running against a Latina ca city councilwoman. Gary Schiff, it is a guy, is seeking to return to his old city council seat, which he abandoned when he ran for mayor in 2013. He's trying to unseat city councilwoman Alondra Cano, the only sitting Latino member on the city council in Mini Papa Little Ass's troubled ninth ward. Well, <clears throat> sweetie, number one, I got to say this. I am so freaking tired of this shit of, well, it's the first Latino or it's the first woman or it's the first black or the first African American or the first Native American or the why the fuck do we need the hyphenation bullshit? You know, when someone commits a crime you don't want to put the gender or um or uh ethnicity in there because well, you know, that doesn't fit with your narrative. But when it's something like this, you got to put the gender and the ethnicity of it in there. And it's like, they're freaking people. A person is running against a person. And you know what? If the people that are voting, those that are going and playing the little, let's punch your little hole in this little chat, or let's go color inside a circle, you know, those people that go do that stuff, if they do, if there's more of them that decide that they want him as opposed to her, or that person as opposed to that person, then deal with it, you big wannies. Good Lord. Apparently, Susan Raffo, an area resident and well-known, oh, here we go, community leader, who's known both Schiff and Kano for many years, has penned an open letter on Fakey Book accusing Schiff of racism for trying to unseat a Latino woman. No, he just wants his old position back because he actually preferred that position. He's read the Kama Sutra. He's tried being mayoral, and he just really didn't like it. It was uncomfortable and chafing. And so he wants the old position back. <laughs> she begins the letter claiming this is a love letter. See? See? And a letter of hope to tell the truth about disappointment. Well, sweetheart, that's kind of a personal issue, don't you think? Adding that I have known council member Kano for six years. And I have known you, Gary, for about 23 years. Since you were, I think, 19 or maybe 20. Well, I'm happy for you that you've known him that long. 
Rafa then wrote that you are a white man running for elected office at a moment of intense division in this country, particularly around race and white supremacy. And have you ever noticed that the bulk of the people that are out there going racist and white supremacy, I want to know where the fuck all this white supremacy is going on, because trust me, darling, I am not getting any special privileges, because... I am melanin, melanin challenged. Is that how you say that? Hmm. You are choosing to put yourself forward against a Latina, an immigrant, BFD. It's it's like this person throws that hat in the ring, and this person throws their hat in the ring, and whichever hat winds up getting the most whatevers, then that hat wins. Who gives a shit if you go hariba hariba around it, or if you or if you go all Frank Sinatra on it? Hell, I don't know. Mm. You will be looking for ways to counter Council Member Cano's work. How do you know? How do you know? While at the same time, attempt to shield your actions from anything that might obviously refer to your racial differences. Mm. I am getting so freaking tired of all of this racial shit. It's ethnic differences. There's no such thing as races. Ethnicities, yes. Cultures, yes. Races, no. Because you know what? If there truly were race differences, then we would not be able to interbreed. And I know there's a whole hell of a lot of people out there that claim they are white supremacists or whatever. They are really, really concerned about the white race. And how it's going to be obliterated because white people and people that have darker skin, you know, those that stayed in the Easy Bake Oven of Life just a little bit longer, that they are commingling and that they are creating lighter skinned dark people and darker skinned light people. And I'm thinking, big freaking deal, so what? So what? If we all become, it's a snitches on the beaches thing here. You know what? It's going to eventually get to the point where nobody knows who started out with a star upon theirs or who's got a star on their ass. And nobody will care. Except for those of you that are going, but the white race will be gone. There's no such thing as a white race. There is an ethnicity that tends to have less pigmentation. That stayed in the Easy Bake Oven of Life a little bit less time than other ethnicities. And yet, uh, going off on a tangent, wow, it doesn't matter what you do or don't do to try to get around this. As a white man choosing to run at this moment, you have agreed to participate in this moment of deep racial pain and divide. Really, who's the racist here? Who's the one that's bringing skin color into the equation? Hmm? The community leader also attacked the politician for, which, okay, he's a bloodsucker, but still, for believing he had a better idea of what needs to be done in the city rather than supporting the councilwoman. Well, maybe just maybe he does like his ideas better. You know, that that's kind of normal. I'm I'm assuming by your love letter that you kind of prefer your ideas to his. It's normal. Most people do prefer their own ideas to others. You know, sometimes they will incorporate some of someone else's idea. But for the most part, they've grown rather attached to their own ideas. That's why it's called their own opinion. Funny how that works that way. <laughs> I just don't understand why someone with your experience and relationships doesn't immediately say to Council Member Cano, it matters deeply to me that you are successful in your role on the City Council. We all need you to be successful. Tell me how I can help. Tell me what you need from me. Tell me how I can support your leadership. No, instead you think you have a better idea for what needs to be done. (laughs) 
Yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, you know what? If she's going to be successful, it's because of her own words and deeds. And it's not going to be because of her skin color. Or her gender. Because you know what? I happen to know people of the male persuasion and people of the female persuasion. And I happen to know smart people of both persuasions. And I also happen to know people that are not so smart of both persuasions. I know it's crazy, but it happens. Rafo does not appear to be criticizing the third candidate in the race, who is black, because, well, he stayed in the Easy Bake Oven longer than her candidate did. This was Mohammed Farah, the executive director of Somali nonprofit Kajug. Is that how you say that? And is also running for the seat. Farah is expected to get the support of the district's large Somali population. Well, see, there you go. Okay, so she definitely is being a race baiter here because she's not going after him because he's a guy. She's going after him because his skin color is lighter. Period. Is that not racist? I'm thinking that's racist. I mean, when you want to go by the definition of what racist is, you know, discriminating against somebody because of their skin color, I think that pretty much fits it right there. Woman, you best stop while you're behind. Hi. What's that? Where are you guys going? Okay, I'm checking the checking the chat over here. Just a minute. Terrorists could smuggle nuclear weapons into the U.S. with Matuana. Holy crap, Anoli! <laughs> oh my God, Rob, you're so funny. <laughs> Hey, okay, and I see Sock Puppet said maybe they could reverse the flow and sneak the nukes that are here out. That would be cool. That would be sweet. Okay. Oh, that's where the Eric Holder came into the... Okay. Okay. Now, see, Rob, I have heard that, too. Rob said maybe we could launch him into the sun, and I've heard that theory. And I thought, why can't we do that? They, everybody says it's a nuclear reaction going on in there anyway. So why don't we just, how, don't, how about we just dispose of all of the nukes by sending them off into the sun? And you know what? If the sun goes bada-bing, bada-boom, well, we were going to do that to ourselves anyway, so... <laughs> I know, that's kind of a weird way of looking at it, but, yeah, what, go figure. Um, oh, you guys are going to Black's Barbecue. I see how you are. See how you are, you, you, you poo-poo heads. Okay. I'm not in Texas. Drat. <laughs> oh, well. I'm going to, I'm going to Colorado this weekend. And I'm sure we will go to some fine dining out there. So, there. Um, let's see. Let me share this one over on this effing site really quick. Wow. You know, I was really planning on being wackadoodle and goofy. And then my frickin' spreaker got all goofy. And then and now I'm going down that dark path. Whoo. Go figure. So, let's 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 do the cranky guy on this one over on this F and site. And if you don't know what the cranky guy looks like, come on over to Freedoms Network, set up an account, and then you'll see what the cranky guy looks like. Cuz I like using those little emoticons. Thank you, Grammy. I truly do like those. Uh, oh, damn it, sock. You got that duck. Damn it. Damn it. It's cuz I wasn't paying attention. Oh, I can come too? Well, where is it at, I be Don C? I don't know where Black's Barbecue is. And it depends on my schedule. Because I am kind of busy, actually. <laughs> I know, for, for someone that just has fur babies around her all the time. 
and and works full time and does the radio and I am kind of busy because I have grandkids too, so um, and a large family. In any case, okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket now. I'm going to share this over in the corner pocket real quick though, just because. Okay, back to my pocket I go because I do have some fun stuff over here. I really do, honest and for true. Um, although this one really isn't fun, but I saw it and I went, ooh, uh, maybe I should be careful or not. This is from the DailySheeple.com. Apparently, an Amish father was arrested and is facing decades in prison for selling products with essential oils. It's originally posted on the Free Thought Project. Um, Samuel Girard, is that how you say that? Who is an Amish farmer from Lexington, Kentucky, will go to trial on February 27th, charged with conspiracy, distributing misbranded drugs, and threatening a witness. Wait a minute here, essential oils are natural, and therefore not drugs. The reason? He's making a healing salve, an ointment that he's been producing for over 20 years. And the Food and Drug Administration isn't happy about how he markets it. Now, see, that's where we get into that sticky wicket. Because the FDA, being the FDA, is total ass munch of holios. Um, oh, here's an idea. Stop making stupid people famous. <laughs> Wow, it's even just a short story. It's so short, it's just a meme. That's cool. I like that. Thank you, Sock. <laughs> That's a bit funny. <laughs> oh, let's see if that posts right over here. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm going to go back to... Where was I? Oh, the Amish father. I can't so distracted sometimes. I almost said it, Vinny, but I caught myself. <laughs> okay. Um, Girard became the target or became a targeted individual of the federal government's FDA since someone in Missouri in 2013, some wenny wenny woo woo, reported the Amish man to the state health department. And at issue were claims the company made about its bomb, which is made from ingredients like rosemary and beeswax and peppermint and chickweed and eucalyptus oil and olive oil and lavender oil and comfrey. Most of those ingredients I have. Officials with the FDA say it's not what's inside his product that concerns them, but rather the claims the farmer made about his product. Principally... That it cures cancer. Oh, see, and that, yeah, yeah. He, that's an oops. Gerard said that a customer who had skin cancer used the all-natural product and reported to him that it cured his cancer. So the Amish father put that report in his advertising of the product. Ah, that's where he got in trouble. Because if if I've learned nothing else from dealing with my oils, it's that not everybody reacts the same way. You know, and it's not just oils. It's any medication. You know, not everybody will have the same reaction to whatever it is you're using or you're eating, which is kind of like, you know, it's also with food. I personally do not like asberry gas. Or Brussels sprouts. I just do not like them. I do not like them, Sam I am. But I do like broccoli. I like cauliflower. I like carrots. I like, um, um, I like food. <laughs> I like turnips. Um, I like grits. You know, there, there's lots of stuff out there that I like that a lot of other people don't like. And that's the wonderful thing about the world. Because if we all like the same thing, then we wouldn't have enough of the same thing. Or we would have too much of the same thing. And then everybody would go, wow, I'm really tired of eating this. Let's try something different. And then next thing you know, everybody would go, 
And they would, okay, I'm going off on a tangent. Let's move along here. <laughs> so, he's not allowed to say that. So he changed the label, which, yeah, you're not allowed to say that it cures anything. You can put those things in there and say that it's, you know, it's it's a lotion. Um, or it's a salve. But you can't even really say that it helps with. You know, like the... the um, the oil blend that I mixed up and sent to Moosey. I just, it smells good. Yeah, there you go. It smells good. And if it helps clear your passages, booyah. And if it doesn't, well, it smells good. And it's all natural. Um, apparently, um, they also said that he called it healing chickweed salve, said one supporter. Ultimately, she said Gerald was forced to call his product Original Chickweed Salve, which, yeah, you can get away with that, another, and another of his products, Two More Gone, also made similar claims about its ability to heal cancerous tumors, and the product contains blood root plant extract <clears throat> that is said to be caustic to the skin. Depends on how you blend it, hun. I mean, there's lots of things out there that can be caustic or toxic in large enough doses. The father of 12 and grandfather of 25, holy crap, he was busy, doesn't seem to understand why he cannot make claims about his product. You know, he can't make those claims, but if someone using that product wishes to say that it helped with, that's fine, but he cannot make those claims. Because once you do, once you say it treats a dis-ease, once you say that it falls under guidelines from the FDA where it is then classified as a drug. And they have purview under, over drugs. So, yeah, that's where he got in trouble. I had a whole class on that. Um, let's see. While officials use the argument that they're protecting consumers from products and manufacturers who make incredible claims about their untested products, even if Girard's health bomb did in fact cure cancer, he could not tell anyone that fact. No, you can't. You can tell someone that someone that purchased the bomb from you had wonderful results using it. And if that person says it's okay, you can give their name to this individual, but you cannot say what kind of results they had. You just plain can't do that. That's where the lawyers and the Fed stick their ugly head and they need to keep, they need to just, and yeah, they say it's to, to, Protect us from the snake oil salesman. Well, you know, if you want to protect us from the snake oil salesman, shut down Big Pharma. Because that's, that's the biggest snake oil salesman out there. Every damn one of those companies. Now, the first reason he could not do so is the barrier of testing, research, and approval process the FDA has in place to bring pharmaceuticals to market, which, yes, then it becomes classified as a pharmaceutical when you make those claims as well. It is lengthy, expensive, and full of bullshit bureaucracy. And it would bankrupt any Amish farmer who attempted to get a product certified through the FDA. Which is precisely why they have that process. It's to keep the little guy out. One controversial aspect of the FDA certification process is that it's redundant, which, uh -huh, it's called bureaucracy. For example, GW Pharmaceuticals has already gone through the United Kingdom certification process to bring their product, Sativix. It's a cannabis-derived sublingual spray for pain, spasms, and epilepsy to market. 
But now that the company wants to sell the product in the U.S., the company has to, once again, go through all of the approval process, a process which has lasted well over three years now in the U.S. In other words, flaming hoops, flaming hoops, flaming hoops. Sorry you singed your ass. No, really, we're not. Flaming hoops, flaming hoops. It's costing the company millions of dollars. And so it's easy to see why one lone farmer whose product has no chemical medicine inside of it, which I beg to differ, I beg to differ, every essential oil is made up of chem- chemical components. It has no synthetic products in it. You could say that, but you cannot say no chemicals because everything is made, made up of some kind of chemical. Everything. Um, and let's see. It would even care to attempt to the approval process, which, yeah, I did. Really? Seriously? It's not just the farmer makes claims about his product, which has gotten him in trouble. It's also that he's put those claims in writing and has refused to allow the FDA to inspect his production facilities and has treated any attempts to do so with hostility, which I understand. I truly do understand. But you allowed them to get their foot in the door when you did that, hun. Hi. <clears throat> Prosecutors pointed out that back in 2013, a federal judge in Missouri banned him from distributing these products until he met certain conditions. Those conditions include allowing the FDA to inspect where Girard made the goods. And according to the indictment, the FDA says their officers were prevented from conducting an inspection at the farm. They also say that he continued to sell the products without letting his customers know they were the subject of court-ordered injunction. He just kept piling it on, didn't he? However, local residents and family who brought bought his products for decades disagree. And you know, you can disagree all you want, but he screwed up putting it on the label, putting it in writing. If you don't wish to be under the purview of of Big Gov, stay out of their field of vision. I think everybody in the community has heard about it, said Bath County resident Susa Moody, explaining how everyone in the community is up in arms over how this man is in jail and facing 68 years. For a homemade salve, he sold to willing customers. Oh, I feel his knees. I can't even figure out what he has done wrong, said Moody. It's called legalities, sweetheart. And it's called lawyers getting into the mix and the federal government getting into the mix. And he really, really, really should have read up on some of this stuff before he made claims. They live at the foot of the cross, and the thought of one of them intentionally doing something wrong is outrageous. You know, it doesn't make any difference if he intended to do it or not, unless you're Shitlery Clinton, and then it's, well, she really didn't intend to do anything wrong. Yeah. Being Amish and not trusting lawyers, he's representing himself. Okay, I don't blame him for that, but he best educate himself. He failed to be present for a court hearing and was later arrested on failure to appear. Sam is a very literal person. This hearing didn't say, hey Sam, you've got to be here. It just said that there's a status hearing in your case and he thought he didn't have to show up. Once again, he's not educating himself. This gentleman needs to listen to Hal. Seriously, you want to know the legalities and the hoops you need to jump through and how to prepare yourself? Start with Hal. And then start with Rob's friends. And there's lots of people out there. Wow. Sorry, dude. It's just um, sad that there's a status hearing. in. Oh, okay. Never mind. I already said that. It was a mistake on his part. But because he's not an attorney, he doesn't understand, said family friend Sally O. And you know what? I can't tell you how many times I have been told ignorance of the law is no excuse. 
sorry. It sucks, but man, he did put himself under the spotlight. He really did. Moody pointed out a possible reason for the attack on him. They're targeting the Amish because they don't threaten. They don't fight back, and they don't like lawyers. Well, duh, that's a given. Go after the little guy. Go after the the easy target. Why pick on someone your own size when you've got little people that you can squash? Duh. And they're just devastated. They brought him out in handcuffs. It was awful. Well, you know, that's what they do. And he is going to get to be an example. That's how they work. In the meantime, the makers of oxycotin, the drug responsible for thousands of deaths a year, are likely to uh, likely enjoying a twenty-five thousand dollar lunch with department heads and the FDA. Yeah, that's called the system, and it sucks. And you either completely walk away from it, or you deal with it. Right now, I'm kind of dealing with it on my terms. But those terms are getting to the point where it's going to be walk away. Because I'm getting sick of this shit, too. And I understand. It sucks. It's a bad situation. But he did. He opened the door. And he let them put their foot in it. I hate when it happens. But, yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, FDA, A.K. Mom Satan. That is true. San Marcos, Texas. I need to look on a map and see where San Marcos, Texas is. So, what's that? Taco Lovin' Texan wants to change official... What? What are they changing the official dish to, Grim? Oh, to tacos? Tacos! Juana Taco, did you start this? <laughs> I thought chili was the official... Hmm. In Texas. I don't know what the official thing is here in uh, Kansas. Okay, got that one. Let me go back. I'm checking your links that you guys are sharing over here. Just so you know. Free speech! I like that. Um. Okay, I got that one. So now, oh, shit. <laughs> shit balls. Okay. There I go. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da -da. We'll share this over here as well. And you know, a lot of these links, I just got to put this out there. Thank you ever so much, Sock Puppet, for giving me that... Uh, little link thingy over there in the RLM because that's where I got a lot of these today. I would just go over there and I would check whenever I had a break in the action or whenever I got tired of doing paperwork, which, I uh, paperwork, uh, and uh, I would scroll through those links and go, wow, that's cool. Yeah, Java Doctor, that is some BS. It is some massive BS, but that's the way they roll, and it's really, really sad. But I don't know what to, I don't know what to do about it. Other than wow, he opened the door. Um, which is why I'm actually quite careful about who I blend stuff up with and and all that other fun stuff because, oh, I don't know. Okay, I got to go to to uh, this one. This one looks fun. And I think this was also in um, that links feed. Once again, thank you, Sock. This is from SputnikNews.com. Apparently, they had a little bit of fun in New York City. New York City. A young bull ran for his life after escaping from a slaughterhouse in the Jamaican neighborhood of the New York City borough of Queens. 
This was on the morning of February the 21st. And police spent two hours chasing the cattle before managing to catch it. Chasing the cattle. Chasing the bull. Not cattle, because cattle is plural. But, you know, it's in New York City. Go figure. The escapee was tranquilized and captured in someone's backyard. The police promised that the bull wouldn't be returned to the slaughterhouse and would be taken to a shelter instead. However, it was later reported that the animal died while being taken to a local animal care department. Steaks! I'm thinking there's going to be a policeman's party and they're going to be having some T-bones. Is what I'm thinking. See, that was short, sweet, and to the point. <laughs> and sad. Poor little gal. Brainy teens more likely to smoke pot than... Well, you know, because they're brainy, Graham. Duh. So where's... It? From time? Really? Do not, do not, do not. Shit, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Auto start. I, yeah, crap. Oh, well. Apparently, um, the smart teens are the ones that are more likely to smoke pot. High-achieving teenagers are more likely to drink alcohol and use cannabis than their less smart peers, a new study of British adolescents suggests. Suggests. Hmm. Well, yeah, because they can afford to. Duh. That's usually the way it works. For the study, researchers tracked 6,000 UK teenagers' use of uh, tobacco, alcohol, and pot from the ages of 11 to around 20. During their early teens, brainy pupils, not that little thing in your eye, but pupils, students, were less likely to smoke cigarettes than their less academically gifted peers. Uh... But they were more likely to say they drank alcohol during this period. And they were also more likely to say that they used cannabis. But this wasn't statistically significant. Uh -huh. However, by the time the students hit their late teens, stop it! Got dandruff, some of it itches. Damn thing. By the time... They hit their late teens. The school smart ones were 50% more likely to use pot occasionally and nearly twice as likely to use it persistently than those who didn't do well at school. They were... What? Asp. A semicolon SP. Okay. More than twice as likely to drink alcohol regularly. How about that's supposed to be also? Wow, talk about a typo that really made my brain go, uh? The study showed correlation, not causation. Though the research speculates that braininess is sometimes linked to openness to new experiences. Something that could lead them to try drugs and alcohol. They also pose it that it's possible the high-achieving students come from a more affluent or highly educated family background, which may make it easier for them to get a hold of alcohol, for example. Yeah, because they have their parents have liquor cabinets that are stocked and, well, raid the liquor cabinet. I know I used to do it. <laughs> and I have a daughter that used to do that. Oy. Our finding that adolescents with high academic ability are less likely to smoke cigarettes but more likely to drink alcohol regularly and use cannabis is broadly consistent with the evidence based on adults. The study's authors said this in a statement. They added that the fact that alcohol and cannabis use among high achieving pupils persisted into early adulthood. And it is evidence against the hypothesis that high academic ability is associated with temporary experimentation with substance use. 
substance used? You know, food is a substance. Milk is a substance. Mud is a substance. But it's not necessarily the way they are using it, is it? Hmm. That is kind of cool. Thank you, Graham. Cool study there, dude. Now, smart kids versus dumb kids. You know, <clears throat> I used to hang with those kids when I was in high school. <laughs> oh, well, that was just awful. Sweetie, you sock puppet, you and Kozu, thank you very much, both of you guys, for doing that. Um... That's really cool. Thank you, Sock Puppet. I truly do appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to put this over on this effing site real quick. Seeing as how I'm loitering and lollygagging and all that other fun stuff, all those other L words. Hey, <laughs> well, maybe not all those other L words. I know a couple of L words that, uh, no, no. Okay, dang, you know, I have less than a half an hour to go. Although I've been having issues, so I might just run just a little bit long just because I was having issues at the start. Because I'm just like uncoordinated like that. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, and we'll do this one too. Yeah. Okay. There. Now, I'll go back here. Oh, Darth pinged out. Who's, who's she comparing? I don't know. T-Bones with, hey, you know, <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, Rob Works. T-Bones with Tranquilla. You know, have you ever sat down and had um, had a, a, a big old T-Bone and a baked tater? Yeah. I don't need a tranquilizer. I'm ready for a nap after I do that. <laughs> I do like my T-Bone steaks. Just got to say. And I do like my baked taters. And yes, I put butter and sour cream and salt and pepper on my baked taters. Sometimes. And sometimes I even put chives on. And sometimes I just put chili and cheese on. I just like baked taters. And I know that's another one of those things that those are empty calories, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know what? Anything in excess is bad for you. So my mother says. So. Okay, I am going to come over here and check. Let's see. Oh, do I want to go there? I don't know. Um, let's see. I have several links here that I'm not really, not really sure that I want to go there. But then again... Uh, okay. Um, I'll go here. This one looks cool. This is a Tesla thing. It's from thenextweb.com. Hello, Rascal. Thank you for helping me. Tesla plans to build at least three new gigafactories. What's a gigafactory, you ask? Well, just wait. I'll tell you. I'm getting ready to scroll down to read it. So... Do you want the good news or the bad news? Tesla's day really depends on how you frame it. So, after a less than stellar Q4 <coughs> saw Tesla miss earnings um, by a wide margin, we still have reason for optimism. The disappointing earnings report took a turn for the better when Tesla representatives announced that they were looking to build as many as five gigafactories over the next few years. Now, look, notice, it took a turn for the better because they said they were looking to build. That doesn't mean they were going to. They just put the possibility out there, and already it took an uptick. So if you, if you think about that, see how easily it is? You know, if you just put it out there in the right way, how you can get a little uptick on good things as opposed to shit. The first gigafactory, or 
Okay, the first, Gigafactory 1 in Sparks, Nevada, is set to hit full capacity at some point next year. Sweet! Once at full capacity, Musk's 13 million square foot facility would split production between Tesla energy storage products and battery packs for Tesla vehicles. The plant would triple the worldwide production of um, Li Ion batteries once it hit its stride. Whatever that is. I'm going to have to read up on that. To start, Tesla vehicles, or Tesla, blah, 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 blah. let's get this spit out right. Tesla vehicle batteries are expected to account for two-thirds of the production. Over time, though, Musk believes with a high degree of certainty that Tesla energy products could generate similar revenue. Could, might, possibly, almost, maybe, kind of, sort of. Ooh, that would be cool, Sock. Okay, Rascal, you've got to stop, sweetheart, because you're using your claws, baby girl, and that hurts. Wow. Okay, I work at a Chevrolet dealership, but I may have to really seriously. And that's a pretty car. That is a very pretty car. Okay, I'm going to get back to mine. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Scroll down. Oh, dang, I was almost done. Luckily, Musk will have space for the increased output because company representatives today said that they were finalizing locations for two additional Gigafactories, potentially three to join Gigafactory 1, and a solar plant in Buffalo, according to the Solar City deal. In Buffalo? Are we talking Buffalo, New York? Seriously? There's nothing firm on the location for the next plant, but Musk said it could be somewhere in Europe and that the company will decide on the location this year, which I think that is really, really fascinating and cool and awesome, and I can't wait. But wait, there's more. So, I do think that's cool. I I think alternative energy is... You know, there's so, they they call it alternative energy, just like alternative news and all that other fun stuff, so that they can distinguish it from the, what everybody is used to. And the reason why they want to dis make that distinction is because now that you have the alt news and alt energy and all this other fun stuff, sure, there's some peace knit greeniac, whatever you want to call them, those lovely little labels that they like to slap on people. But, you know, if they can put alternative in front of it, now alternative has a not so positive spin to it. They've worked at it for a while, but they have gotten it to where alternative is not necessarily a positive. And so it's all... It, they, you know, when they work on shit, whoever they are, whoever's doing this shit, um, we're the ones that are falling for it. But whoever is coming up with this stuff, i got to say, you're an evil genius, number one. But number two, long-range plans. Seriously, this is like a chess game that that they are thinking of their checkmate move before we've even conceived of making a chess board, let alone the chess players, chess pieces. You know, that's how far ahead they are. We're catching up, because at least, you know, now we're to the point where it's like, you know, it's the same thing as a checkerboard. Duh. <laughs> so, we are catching up, but... Mm, it's kind of sad. It's a slow catch-up. Kind of like Hunt's. Is is it Hunt's the one that had the anticipation commercial? <laughs> I don't remember if it was Hunt's or Heinz. Or, it's been so long since I watched a commercial. Okay, I'm going to come over here to the pig real quick. I do have a couple other things in my pocket, but ah, they just weren't calling to me. So, over here on the pig for Wednesday, February the 22nd. There is a piggish blame game update. Yay! Yay! So, the pig word of the day is progtopia. It's a hamboism. 
an isolated enclave that is populated exclusively by the cliff lefties and its function is to excuse me, hiccup to road test libtard notions before they infli- they're inflicted on rational individuals. Oh, I didn't know that they did it. They tested them prior to. I thought they just did so. Okay, rascal, get down. Uh, quotable quotes. Every time you turn around, the one-party California government is enacting new taxes, new regulations, new gun restrictions, new politically correct mandates on private property, new environmental restrictions, new requirements to run your life and business not as you and your customers see fit, but as the elites in Sacramento and elsewhere in the state government see fit. It's not unlike Soviet Russia. Used to be. Communist Cuba and the New America, or excuse me, the New America leftist demon craps. They're trying to transform us into, or transform us into as quickly and militantly as possible. Transform, okay, whatever. That didn't read right, but I'll figure it out later. As Donald the Trumple Stilskin's election showed, America is not quite ready to become completely socialist. California represents the exception. For the most part, Californians appear to be done with capitalism, economic freedom, and individual rights. Absent some kind of reversal, the state will, before long, turn into the socialist communist utopia most of our intellectuals and elites think all of America should become. The environmentalist restrictions alone could bring the state down in time because you cannot maintain, much less build, a great civilization when the government forbids nearly every form of construction or energy use imaginable. That is from Dr. Hurd. Now, today's question is... Has Milo nuked his career? Quite possibly. You know, that's what happens when you're flamboyant and outspoken and you you reach that tipping point where you have become just, you know, it's it's a really fine line that you have to walk. Very, very, very precarious balancing act. And, you know, once you become extremely full of yourself... And think that, oh, everybody loves me because I'm this and this. No, no, not everybody loves you. And when when you step on your own dick, <laughs> which I'm going to assume he did, I haven't checked any of the shit out because although I do find Milo, Milo or Milo, however you want to say it, I prefer Milo because Milo and Otis. But, um, you know, from everything that I've seen on social media, I'm thinking he stepped on his own dick or stepped on his boyfriend's dick or stepped on someone's dick. And the outcome is not pleasant. And it's like, okay, I find you amusing from time to time. Kind of like Annie Coulter. I find Annie Coulter amusing and interesting from time to time. But it's, she's she's not one of those people that I go out of my way to listen to or read anymore. I used to. I actually own one of her books. And then mother bought it for me again for my birthday. And it's like, oh, mom, oh, I didn't make it through the copy I bought. (laughs) Shit. Okay, moving along. Five rules to remember in life. Number one, money cannot buy happiness, but it's more comfortable to cry in a Mercedes than on a bicycle. That's true. Uh, Well, no, I really can't say that's true. I've never sat in a Mercedes and cried. Correct. Of course, I've never sat on a bicycle and cried either, so... Huh. Okay. Number two. Forgive your enemy, but remember the bastard's name. Aha! Uh-huh. I like that one. Number three. Help someone when they're in trouble, and they will remember you when they're in trouble again. Yeah. They will. Honest. Number four. Many people are alive only because it's illegal to shoot them. There are quite a few people that I happen to know 
that the only reason that they're alive is because I could not reach them to give them a hug around their neck until they shut the fuck up. (laughs) I gotta admit it. I gotta admit it. They're lucky. They were on the other side of the world. In any case, and finally, number five, alcohol does not solve any problems. But then again, neither does milk. (laughs) Yes, it does, because if you've got cookies and you want to dunk them, you must have milk. Just putting that out there. That is a that is a cosmic problem, to have cookies and no milk to dunk it in. For those of you that eat cookies and milk. For those of you that don't, sorry, don't know what you're missing. Okay, this date in history, February the 22nd, 1856. First national meeting of the Elephant Clan in Pittsburgh gets off to an awkward start when Juan McCain's speech convinces attendees that they showed up at a Democratic meeting instead. Whoopsie! This date in history, February the 22nd, 1861. Due to an insane bet... Edward Weston leaves Beantown on a walk to Lincoln's inauguration. Bloated Lib and Speedo seize him, <clears throat> seize him off with a rousing, I'll drink to that. Yeah, that's Teddy the Swimmer Kennedy, for those of you that don't know. In Hambo speak. And finally, this date in history, February 22nd, 1903. U.S. side of Niagara Falls runs short of water. When Uncle Sam's check to Mother Nature's water department bounces. Oopsie. Sucks when that happens. And you know, Uncle Sam's checks no longer bounce. Hell, they catch on fire. They spontaneously combust before you even put a pin to them. And bad boys are hot, 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 hot. And I'm not talking as in va va voom hot. I'm talking, ouch. That bun your ass. Okay. Now, I do have a few more minutes left. Let me go see what's going on on Oopy. Oopy, Oopy, Oopy. De doop, de doop, um, let's, oh wow, the critters are going nuts over here. There's a rescue horse that plays piano at an Australian farm. There's playful dolphins that join in with surfers at an Australian beach. Miri B, down under, sounds like the place to be for critters. Uh, lions block road to get attention from keeper at South African Sanctuary. Aww. Irish politician wants to call an army to combat aggressive rhododendrons. Oh, you know I'm going to go there. (laughs) That's, I love that headline. Irish politician wants to call an army to combat aggressive rhododendrons. They're aggressive, I swear. Apparently this Irish politician asked Parliament to enlist the Army's help in battling the spread of an aggressive variety of plant. Hmm. County Kerry politician Michael Healy Ray said that the spread of rhododendron shrubs has become so rampant that the help of the Irish Army would be necessary to provide enough resources to combat it. I'm thinking pour vinegar on them. Cut them off, pour vinegar on them. If you really don't want them. People are inclined to think that when it comes to a national park that you close the gates and let it off. That you don't maintain the deer population. You don't aggressively attack the rhododendrons, he said. The rhododendron, rhododendron situation in Killarney National Park is gone so bad. How bad is it? <clears throat> that nothing short of calling in the army is going to put it right. Really? I think they're kind of pretty. <laughs> Healy Ray said that the park was neglected and uh, losing the war against the overgrown rhododendrons, which can grow taller than 25 feet. How cool! Okay, I want some of those. I want to grow some of those in my yard. It's probably too dry out here and probably gets too hot, but that's cool. 
He added that the plant had begun taking over completely despite programs of work over the years to cut them. Well, like I said, vinegar, vinegar, will, vinegar and salt. Okay, and uh, put a little bit of Dawn dish soap in there because that will peel the waxy coating off. That'll that'll knock their asses back. Trust me, it works. Regional Economic Development Minister Michael Ring disputed Healy Ray's statement that the park has been neglected, noting more than 700,000 euros, or 740,000. 20 or 740,000 68 dollars had been spent on clearing rhododendrons in the park in the past six years wow those bad boys really are going nuts do they not have a natural enemy my department has invested heavily in tackling this invasive species the control of which is difficult costly and labor intensive once again, vinegar and salt and a little bit of Dawn dish soap to cut through that waxy coating. Just putting it out there. If you really don't like them pretty flowers, a uh, Florida. Oh, good Lord. Okay, Grim, you know I got to go there. Uh, begin civil war and prophecy Trump dies in jail. <laughs> oh, geez, Grim, that's kind of crazy. Okay. Um, from the great state of Florida. <sighs> A woman attacks X with knives pulled from bra. Ah, ow. Hmm. And then I see another link that I'm going to have to go to. Um, <clears throat> Springfield, Florida. This woman allegedly pulled knives from her bra and attacked her ex-boyfriend with them during an argument. According to the Panama City News Herald, Bay County resident Lauren Myra Smith, 19, is accused of attacking Robert Dickerson II with knives she had concealed in her bra. Okay, I do have... I do have a, 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 no, uh, no, I, you don't need to know about that. <laughs> Let's just say I have weapons. <laughs> a Springfield Police Department re received a call at around noon on Monday that Smith was trespassing on Dickerson's property. The call led to lan the landlord of Dickerson's property to issue a trespass warning to Smith. At about 11.15 p.m. that night, now, okay, sweetie, do you not know that p.m. means at night? So when you say at about 11.15 p.m., you don't need to add that night. Or if you really want to say that night, you say at about 11.15 that night. You don't have to do both. Oy. I know, it's one of them little pet peeve things. Smith returned to the scene and engaged in an altercation with Dickerson. This was according to the News Herald. During the argument, Smith pulled two knives from her bra and began to attack Dickerson, who sustained lacerations on his hand. He ran to a neighbor's home, but Smith followed close behind, this time attempting to use a screwdriver as a weapon. Did he wear glasses? Was she trying to make them really, really wobbly? Yeah, I know. Bobcat Goldthwait. Really, really old skit. Witnesses restrained and disarmed Smith before police arrived. She was arrested, charged with trespassing, aggravated assault, armed bur uh, burglary, and aggravated battery, and taken to the Bay County Jail, where she is being held on a $40,000 bond. Thank you, Grimmy, for that one. And now, off to the side, and since I'm going to run just a little bit over because I had issues... I'm going to go to this one that is also there because I covered this story last week. And so here's an update. Update, update. Pineapple Pizzagate forces Iceland president to 
back off band, dude. <laughs> Hawaiian pizza is obviously not for everyone. It's a decadent tasty treat to some, but for others, ham and pineapple are the worst topping choices ever created, which I, you know, I got to admit, uh, it was just a couple months ago was the first time I've ever had pizza with pineapple on it. And it wasn't bad. I'm not going to go out of my way and order it. But if someone has it and it's like the last piece left, I won't go hungry. <laughs> Back to this. Iceland's president waded into the fray last week when a student asked him a question about pineapple on pizza. Ham wasn't mentioned, by the way. And uh, he said that he found the combination completely disgusting and would ban it if he could. By Tuesday, he was forced to back down from his remarks on banning it after a social media storm dubbed Pizzagate erupted. Oh, I'm seeing distraction, deflection, a different Pizzagate. So see, now it's okay to talk about Pizzagate because now it's about the Icelandic president that didn't want to have pineapple. I see how this is working. Okay, hey... Smooth there, dude. That was slick. Goes on to say, I do not like pineapples, or I do like pineapples, just not on pizza, he posted on Facebook. I do not have the power to make laws that forbid people to put pineapple on pizza. Oh my God, really, seriously? A politician actually admits that he doesn't have the power to mandate or forbid. Holy crap and holy. Mark this on your calendars. Presidents should not have unlimited power. Oh, my God. Elizabeth, it's biggin. <laughs> I would not want to hold this position if I could pass laws forbidding what I don't like. I would not want to live in such a country. I like this guy. I like this guy. I'm not liking the way the whole Pizzagate thing is going because it's diverting from the actual Pizzagate. But although this is this is an amusing one, but I like this guy. I like this guy. Okay. Instead, he made his own recommendation for the best toppings. For pizza, I recommend seafood. He's apparently Iceland's youngest president ever at 48. And he was sworn into office last August. Now, I do know some people that uh, like seafood pizza. I've never had that. Although I have had, you know, seafood eat food pizza. So, there's that. Okay. Um Let me see. There. Okay. It is on that one. I guess, you know what, I am out of time, <clears throat> as in it's time for me to normally be gone out of here. But, you know, since I had some technical issues at the beginning, I'm just kind of playing a little bit. So, thanks y'all for listening to the Rocket Chair this evening. Your hostess with the mostest whatever the hell I got the mostest of, but I got it. Grammy Mary wishes to thank you immensely for riding along. I hope you did buckle up, because I think it got a little bit bumpy on the way just saying um let's see i will not once again i will not be here friday evening i also will not be here saturday for the dork table but i will be back next week for the wackadoodle wednesday edition from of grammy's rocket chair so you know until then i will be seeing you in chats you know, and all that other fun stuff until the weekend. So I'll chat with you later. And uh, if I don't, have an absolutely awesome rest of your week and a splendiferous weekend. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Same batty time, same batty channel here on the RLM. I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>